Hello and welcome, my name is Meeples, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at About Betty's Boob, written by Vero Kazat and illustrated by Julie Oshelo. Content notes for surviving cancer, casual nudity and sex, loss of hair, mastectomy, being ostracized for not performing femininity perfectly, body horror, and body dysmorphia. This book was apparently published by Boom Archaea in 2017. Circling back to the creators of the comics, the bios in the back of the book are as follows. Quote, not a very strong conversationalist, Vero Cassatt had to learn at an early age to use a pen and then a keyboard to write all types of things. Love letters, cover letters, commercials, comedy sketches for a one-woman show, film, and television scripts. But now she flourishes in comic writing. As the author of the humor series in When Will You Have a Baby? with artist Madeline Martin, she continues her gift of combining humor and life with About Betty's Boob. And Montreal illustrator Julie Rochello took her first steps into comics in 2010 with The Invisible Girl, written by Emily Villeneuve. The two storytellers went on to win the Bedez Causa from the Quebec Francophone Comics Festival. The same year, Julie received the Joe Schuster Award for Best Colorist and was nominated for Best Designer. Along with About Betty's Boob, her comic adventure continues with the series The Wrath of Fantomos with Olivier Bouquet and The Little Homeland with Nomad Gregoire. Keywords, I would say, remind me of this book, include self, discovery, chosen family, gender performance, roaring 20s, burlesque, and visual poetry. The Goodreads synopsis of the book is pretty short and sweet, an inspiring and surprising comedic tale of loss and acceptance told largely through silent sequential narrative about Betty's boob is a seminal work from master storyteller Vero Kazat and Julie Rochelle. Betty lost her left breast, her job, and her guy. She does not know it yet, but this is the best day of her life. End quote. A largely wordless comic, it was almost to the point where I wasn't sure if this could count as a translated work, but there are a few more word-heavy sections in this originally French comic, so we are good. The art is certainly an incredibly strong part of the book, colorful and dynamic. A lot is communicated through very few words. There's vintage feel that I can't quite outline. Gender was something that bothered me a bit for the first half of the book. Spoiler alert, this plot involves Betty being persecuted for not having two breasts before transitioning to how Betty discovers a better life in a new crowd. The first part just dragged on much longer than I thought was necessary, and it was honestly a bit hard to follow everyone's obsession with breasts equal women. Not knowing what would happen next, of course, once things turn around and the creators let Betty find acceptance and celebration for her less than, quote, perfect body, I was a lot more comfortable. Although I could see it still not being super fun for many. The book also includes a lot of playful and often non-sexual nudity, which is a huge plus. In the later part of the book, we pass through a metaphorical veil and things become much more diverse. When it comes to gender expression and sexuality, there was a bit more race diversity, but in the crowds of extras, there was only a dash, so I feel like there could have been more pretty easily. The one note I would say about the apparent queerness at the end of the book is that since Betty appears to remain pretty cis and straight otherwise, it could be seen as kind of the gay best friend sort of dealio queerness to the service of making straight and cis white women feel good. I felt like the very strong contrast between before and after combined with the total celebration of queerness two-thirds of the way in left me feeling pretty positive about the representation. It being a wordless comic, we don't get much traditional character development of anyone, except maybe Betty herself, but I would be interested in how y'all feel. It's not going into my next A to Z of queer lit video, for sure. Class was erased in this book and money never comes up. People are just magically able to live fairly comfortable middle class lives. 
As far as ability versus disability, while my understanding of the term doesn't seem to indicate that Betty is disabled, the book is exploring what happens when certain bodies are less than perfect. Ability and sexuality are often tied together in ways that are pretty toxic, and I would say this is a nice pushback against that. Reading this book digitally probably also made the first part feel longer, as I had no idea how far I was to the book at any given time. But it ended up pretty, being pretty fun and something I would see many people enjoying. The way the story is communicated, mostly sans words, was beautiful and so very playful. Four out of five stars. Bye y'all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.